Why did my concrete patch fail? As it turns out, this is a really common question. <laughs> Why is it such a common question for people to be asking about failed concrete patches. What is going on with all of these failing concrete patches? Well, I think I could probably summarize it. The main reason is there's a bunch of technical errors that you could possibly make that would make a concrete patch fail early. If you make one of them, yours probably failed early. So if you don't know what you're doing with concrete, as in you don't really work with concrete for a living, so if you go to make a repair like a patch, you could probably make one of these very common mistakes, which would absolutely totally make your concrete patch fail early. Let's talk about some of those now. I'm thinking five, probably five I can come up with off the top of my head. Here are five reasons that your concrete patch might have failed. First things first, if you have a concrete patch and it failed, how thick was the patch? If you say anything thinner than a half inch, I think that might be a problem. As it turns out, concrete's not really able to be very thin. So if you do like an overlay or a patch or a repair, it can't feather to a zero edge. And if you feathered yours to a zero edge or an eighth of an inch or a quarter inch in thickness at most, it's probably going to fail because you can do that with concrete, but you have to modify the mix using admixtures, or you have to at least use a very specialty type of overlay cement. So your patch has to be at least a half inch thick in all areas and if it's going to be thinner than that it needs to be modified with polymers or you need to use a special bag of concrete that you pick up that's made for having a feathered zero edge finish. Lack of surface preparation is probably going to account for the vast majority of concrete patch failures. So let's talk about preparing the surface for a concrete patch. Now first, if you have something like, let's say, oil. Oil is going to be a deal breaker. You can't bond new concrete to old concrete if the old concrete surface is oily. And it's actually kind of hard to clean oil out of concrete. So that could be a problem there. If you have oily concrete and you're trying to patch over that, that's probably the reason that your concrete patch has failed. So what do you do about a problem with oily concrete? Well, you, there's a couple of ways that you could approach it. None of them are ideal, but probably let's assume it's a worst case scenario. I would go right to a paint thinner product. You put paint thinner on the oily concrete and then you use something like sawdust or kitty litter to absorb it. And then if it's not gone, then put more paint thinner on it and let it do its thing for a little bit and then put some more sawdust or kitty litter on there. And then once that's done as much as it can do and you clean that all away, then I would use a TSP scrub. So TSP, um, I think it's trisodium phosphate. It's something that you'd find in the painting section of your local hardware store. I would mix one cup of that with one gallon of hot water. And then I would use a stiff nylon brush, pour some of that liquid on there, and go ahead and scrub it and scrub it. And that's going to degrease it, and it's going to help remove any of that oil residual that's there. And it's also going to neutralize the pH of the concrete, which is very important because you can't have a very, very high or very, very low pH. And we're gonna talk about something that's the next part of preparing concrete for a patch, and that's acid washing. Acid washing is kind of like your standard protocol for cleaning concrete and getting it ready for a patch except for when there's oil involved. Acid washing is actually counterproductive when there's oil because it will bake the oil into the concrete and then you can't get rid of it anymore. So first you're supposed to degrease it as I've explained earlier, and then you're supposed to acid wash it. Then you're supposed to neutralize it and you would neutralize with baking soda or a TSP scrub and rinse. That's how you prepare a concrete surface properly to apply a patch in such a way that it's not going to fail. So moving on, let's talk about what else could be a problem here. Well, let's say you did all of that stuff and you cleaned and prepared your surface very well and you weren't expecting to have a problem and yet here you are, you have a problem where your concrete patch has failed. I think that it's worth mentioning that most people don't realize when you patch concrete, you want the old concrete to be wet. 
Let me rephrase that. You need the old concrete to be wet. When you patch concrete, it's the water permeation from the new patch into the old concrete, which creates a bond between the two. And if, you're, if your old concrete is already dry, the water can't permeate in because kind of whatever water is there just absorbs immediately and that's it. Because that concrete was so dry and thirsty, it just drank up all that moisture before the concrete really had a chance to seep in further, permeate further and create a stronger bond. In the world of concrete working, you call it SSD or saturated surface dry conditions. And it means the existing layer must be completely soaked with water, but not so much that it's pooling on the surface. So you soak it to the point of saturation, but then you stop so that the surface layer is dry. You don't want pooling water on it. So SSD conditions are ideally what you want to have anytime you're going to add a patch of new concrete over old concrete. The final thing I'll mention about patching concrete that has failed, it could be that you need some sort of bonding agent between the two layers of new concrete and old concrete. In some cases, you use mechanical forms of bonding agents like anchoring rebar or steel into the existing concrete, pinning it might be called, and then you put your new concrete in place and the steel kind of is connected between the new and the old so it holds it all together. That's one way. And you could also use other means like using adhesives like PVA or like a, a liquid glue mixed with Portland cement that you paste on as a bonding slurry and then apply your new concrete over the bonding slurry. So there's a couple of different ways that you could try to actually get a better bond when you're bonding new concrete over old concrete. And if you were dealing with a situation where you didn't want to have this failure where your concrete is delaminating or cracking or failing early, I think I would do all of these steps. I would prepare it properly and I would make sure I had SSD conditions and I would find some sort of means to bond the concrete together, whether it be mechanical or with some sort of admixture or bonding agent. But I think if you do all of these things cumulatively, you should have a much higher likelihood of success and more likely that you don't keep having this concrete breaking and failing all the time. Wait, don't go away. I just thought of one more tip and this is actually pretty important. I don't know how I missed this. So let's say we're gonna bond some something like we wanna put a patch on this concrete. That concrete that we're attaching to, we'll call that the substrate. Is it in good condition? Is it mechanically sound or is it old and failing? Like if I took a screwdriver and scraped at it, would nothing happen? Because that's exactly what should happen if it's sound concrete, nothing at all. But if I can just like scrape it away and it's sandy and weak, well, you're gonna have an awfully hard time to make a sound connection with the repair because the substrate surface is failing, it's disintegrating, and that's kind of how concrete fails, is that over time the cement component washes away and it just leaves behind the aggregates, which are sand and gravel. And that's why you end up with this weak, sandy surface. So you could end up in a state like that where you are applying patches, but basically on the microscopic level, the whole surface of the original substrate layer is failing over and over again. So your bond, your bond isn't failing, the patch you made isn't failing, but what you're attaching it to is failing and that's like a foundation of concrete working anytime you're looking like at, at an overlay or a render purge anything like that you have to look at the substrate and consider is this stuff strong enough for me to mechanically attach a new layer to or is it going to keep failing over and over again because if it is you have to remove it whether mechanically chipping it out or using sand or soda blasting or water blasting some means to get down to a sound substrate that we can make a solid connection to because you're never going to get a concrete patch to work if you're laying a concrete patch over a failing substrate. Your concrete patch might have failed for one of these five reasons. Five. Five reasons. I don't know why five is important. YouTube says there has to be a number. Here's five reasons. I don't know. Okay. <laughs>